Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Christina and today I am going to be doing my October wrap ups. I know I am a little bit late or a little bit behind on my wrap up and yet I have and yes I haven't done a wrap up in a long time. I want to get better at doing wrap ups but it's still kind of hard for me to figure out how I can get better at wrap ups. You guys already know that wrap ups are really not my favorite but I do want to talk to you guys about the books that I read for the months when I do read them. It's just hard for me to explain what I read without going in full depth of the story from beginning to end. So yeah we're gonna try my best. I'm gonna try my best today to do justice for each book that I read. <laughs> so um, in the month of October I read eight books. Yes eight. I'm very proud of myself because you guys already know I try to set goals for myself. I try to do TBRs and I fail miserably. The last TBR I did was in September whenever I was um, doing the Hogwarts House Battles readathon. I was supposed to read I think like 12 books and I think I only read like three. Um, yeah, September was not a good month for me. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and forget about that and we're going to go ahead and jump into what I read in October. So the first book I read was Carry On by Rainbow Rao and I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed this book. I actually listened to it on audio and I read along with it so yeah I'm glad I did that because the audio was really good. Um, I and In this story we follow two main characters Boz and Simon. They are both attending this wizarding school. To be honest when I read this book and going into it it did remind me a lot of Harry Potter. Um, one because Simon is like this um, chosen one. He's supposed to be like super powerful but he just has to like fully develop all his powers and learn how to control them. And then he goes to a wizarding school who is under a headmaster who is like very protective of him. So it really reminded me of Harry Potter just like in a more I guess adultish way if that makes any sense because you know like when you read harry potter you do kind of you kind of not feel the night it's not naive but you do feel the sense of it being like what am i trying to say you do see how young harry potter's mind is compared to like simon's so yeah that's all i'm gonna go that's all i'm gonna say about that but yeah we follow simon and boss who are attending this wizarding school Simon, like I said, is supposed to be like this chosen one. He is super powerful. He's supposed to grow into this poten his he's supposed to reach his full potential and like be the most powerful wizard in the world. He he is like all savior. <laughs> um so uh, yeah. Uh we do, in this story we I find out we find out that Boz and Simon are somewhat enemies. They come from different clans. Um Boz is actually I want to say I think he's part wizard part vampire or he, or he might just be full-on vampire but anyways um he is like supposed to be undercover not really undercover but nobody knows at the school that he is vampire because it is for witches and wizards except for Simon. Simon does find out that um Boz is a vampire but he doesn't say anything. Um, Boz and Simon are somewhat enemies as well but they have to figure out how to coexist with one another because they do live together in their dorm rooms um, but soon they have to actually team up together to fight off all that is evil that is trying to ruin all that is good. Um, so yeah and then they do find out that the headmaster is behind a lot of what's going on that he's power hungry and actually wants to take all of Simon's powers so like I said Boz and Simon have to work together to defeat all that is bad and in the process of all this they get to know one another and we soon find out that they actually have all their animosity is actually sexual tension between one another and when I read this my mind was completely blown so 
that's why I really enjoyed this book as well because it does have diversity obviously they become romantically involved with one another and they're males they're both boys and who doesn't like a good romance <laughs> and so yeah so they do work together and they fight off the evil and at the end of it become in love with one another so yeah i gave this book a five out of five stars i don't know if i told you guys that but i did really enjoy the book and i'm ready to read book number two which is wayward sons and i need to go and pick that book up i have the audio and it's actually on hold for me um actually no it's not i have it available now that i think about it so i can't wait to jump into that and i'll probably jump into that pretty soon so stay tuned for that so the next book i read was saga volume two um i read volume one i want to say september i believe or maybe it was august it's been a while since i read volume one but i decided i finally got to pick up volume two i actually found this at my local half price book which is a discounted bookstore so yeah we follow marco and alana elena who are currently on the run because they are part of two different clans who are like enemies and they have fallen in love with one with one another and they've actually had a baby together um so yeah they're pretty much on the run because they have people that are after them who are trying to kill them because they went awol so yeah <laughs> um in the story we also uh meet marco's parents who are very disappointed in their son because one they think he is dumb two they think he is dumb for falling in love with the enemy and yeah but they are forced to love their new grandbaby um so yeah that's pretty much what the story consists of them on the run and they do um finally come together as a family marco's father ends up passing away in the story he's very ill yeah, i gave this book a four out of five stars um i did like it it's just we're still in the very beginning phases of it and i'm really ready to see more so yeah the next book i read i actually listened to this on audio and i read along with it as well and that is harry potter and the prisoner of azkaban i don't think i need to say much about this book um but i will say don't hate me you guys please don't hate me and don't unsubscribe <laughs> but um i gave this book a 3.5 stars this is a reread for me i haven't read this book since i was like in elementary and rereading this book was kind of i just i gave it a 3.5 stars because i felt like this book was so unnecessarily long i love the movie the prisoner of azkaban but the book itself i just felt like it dragged it's one of those it's one of the parts in the series that it just like it just drags <laughs> so i will explain a little bit that this follows harry hermione and ron and they have to harry has discovered that his parents were betrayed by a close friend and the close friend they think betrayed him happens to be his godfather who is Sirius black he has escaped from the prison of azkaban and he was actually placed there because he was accused of murder from he was accused of murdering the potters amongst other um, muggles and wizards i believe um so yeah harry is ready to kill sirius because he has heard rumor that sirius is trying to kill him but also has discovered that he was the one that betrayed his parents and got them killed by lord voldemort but in the end he does discover that it was not sirius black who betrayed his parents um he was actually quite loyal to his parents that's why his parents chose him to be his godfather um but it was actually one other friend peter pettigrew who was the one who betrayed harry's parents and got them killed so yeah um at the end of it harry and hermione had to turn back time to save sirius so you guys should already know this story um yeah they helped sirius sirius escape um so that way he could live a free life um like he should have been <laughs> and peter pettigrew obviously got away so yeah the next book i actually read was babysitter coven um i don't physically have the copy of this book i did listen to it on audio and i plan on getting the physical copy because i actually want to reread it um i felt like during the audio i did 
pay attention but not enough. Um, I will say that this follows a girl named Esme and Cassandra who both have telekinesis powers and they're also babysitters. Um, Esme didn't know she was powerful until she met Cassandra. She just notices as she's turning 17, I believe, um, she's starting to notice that she's making things happen with her mind and not realizing it until Cassandra tells her that she's doing it because she has telekinesis powers. Um, so yeah, they are... They are forced to learn how to control their powers the right way and also are put up against these evil people who are starting to pop up and they discover that one of the evil persons happens to be Cassandra's father who actually took off when Cassandra and her brother were younger and have left them by themselves. Um, he's actually evil and is planning on destroying the world until Esme and Cassandra work together and destroy him. So that's pretty much all I can say about it like I said I don't really have a full-on memory it was kind of forgettable for me and I think it's because like I said I really didn't pay attention too much to it um like I should have I really definitely want to reread it I feel like because I tried to read so many books I tried to do this during a 24-hour readathon and um I failed miserably and I read it so quick or I listened to it so quick that I really didn't give my brain a full chance to try and like really absorb the knowledge to this book um not to say that it was bad I think the things that I do remember it was really cute um Esme and Cassandra know that they are protectors they um are powerful and they have to protect all that is good um so I did give this book a four out of five stars because like I said what I do remember of it was really good and I do want to reread it so that way I can I don't know maybe change my ratings it might be lower might be higher but for the most part I do want to give it a four out of five stars because I thought it was really cute so <laughs> is how to drink coffee with a ghost I picked this one up this is by Amanda Lovelace um I picked this up because I seen that Naya reads and smiles um Naya from Naya reads and smiles here on YouTube she actually likes this author so I found this book at my local half price books which is a bookstore that sells books for a discounted price um they had this one in stock right there in the front of the the aisle and I noticed that it was by Amanda Lovely so I decided to pick it up and give it a go because she uh Anaya <laughs> Naya really talks about how great her writing is and her, her poetry and you guys already know that I'm not really a big fan of poetry because sometimes it is hard for me to understand some of what they're trying to say um so yeah but this one was very easy I will say it does what I like about this too is that it gives you a list of triggers so that way if you if these things trigger you for you like you know to be mindful of it so the trigger warnings are child abuse eating disorder sexual assault self-harm violence cheating death gore blood trauma grief and then it does say and possibly more so so yeah pretty much this book talks about let me read the back real quick it says you cannot have a funeral for your mother without also having a funeral for yourself so it's pretty much talking about a girl who is thinking about all the things that her mother has put her through um from child to adult and it's something that I totally can relate on um because my childhood was not all that great with my mom um so it does talk about a lot of things that she had to go through as a child and through her teenage years and into her adulthood um so she feels like her mom she doesn't have that closure and she never got a chance to have that closure until now now that she's talking about it she feels like now she can finally put all that weight on her shoulder you know get it off her chest by simply talking to her mom who is now like dead um and just like really letting it go so that's pretty much what the book is about i really did like the read i felt like it was very easy to understand like her writing style i definitely want to pick up more books from her um because i enjoyed reading it i didn't have not one trouble understanding what she was trying to say she was very clear for it to be poetry book like she was very very clear on what she was saying so that's what i really liked about this book so if you're definitely interested in reading this book i say 
go ahead and read it especially if you're someone who has a lot of tension towards like your parent like whether it be your mom or your dad and you just like need something that you can definitely relate to I'd say go ahead and read this but if some of the triggering some of the warnings the trigger warnings if that upsets you I'd say don't read it until you know you can fully if you're mentally ready for it so yeah I gave this book a five out of five stars I can't wait to really read another one of her books I I really enjoyed this book and like I said it was super relatable like really relatable I literally thought I was reading my own life in this book so loved that so the next book I read was With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I actually listened to this as well on audio and I read along with it. I'm glad I picked up the audio book or I'm glad I downloaded the audio for this because Elizabeth Acevedo is the one actually um, reading it. And um, I love her accent. Like I really love her accent. She literally made me envision the character. Like I felt like her voice matched the character like so good um so we follow imani who is a teenage mother she got pregnant when she was a freshman um so she is a single mom i can totally relate to that being a teen mom and i was single for a little bit before i met my husband <laughs> so yeah um she is a single mother who is also sorry my ear is very irritating so if you see me pulling on it it's because it's irritated <laughs> um she is a single mother who is aspiring to be a chef so what happens is at her school her school school adds a new course for them to take and one of them being a cooking class and during the cooking class they actually get to go abroad to spain and so she's kind of iffy about doing it because one she has a daughter to think about and two she doesn't think she can afford something like that so although um she didn't want to take the cooking she wanted to take the cooking class but she knew like you know it would be very tough for her she does get um uh, she does get not pushed but encouraged by her grandmother who she lives with um, to go and take the class because she knows her grandmother knows that she is very talented and that this is something that she should definitely do follow her dreams just because she's a mom doesn't mean that she needs to stop doing what she loves to do so her grandmother is very supportive and she also has a best friend that's super supportive as well um, so Amani takes her cooking class um and throughout the cooking class she also meets a guy who she's very standoffish at first because she's gotten her heart broken obviously with her um child's father um so she's very guarded when it comes to her heart and you know she just doesn't feel like she has time for that she just has time for her daughter work home and school and that's it so she's stretched very thin till finally like you know she just decides to do something for herself to um so that way she can be happy but that's not the moral of the story the moral of the story is that she goes for her dreams and she after she graduates from high school she gets an internship with a chef that is well known um and yeah she just what i can say is that i like Amani is so driven and she's all about her daughter and just really doing what's best for her daughter by any means so and by that you know with her trying to work her hardest to push herself to be the best mom she can possibly be um so yeah I can totally relate to this because I was a teen mom and yeah I did have a job as soon as I was of age to get a job I got a job so that way I could you know take care of my daughter because I brought her into the world so I'd say this is a def this is definitely a good read and if you can get it on audio do that because like it's just it was by far one of my favorite audios that I've heard that I've listened to so far so yeah um I gave this book a five out of five stars I totally related to it and I thought it was really good um I can't wait to read more of Elizabeth Acevedo's books <laughs> sorry i can't really say her last name i can't wait to read more of her books because this was a really really dope read so the next book i read was another graphic novel and that is paper girls guys i gave this book a two out of five stars i was completely lost from beginning to end with this book i think it's about like obviously it's about four girls who are um they do newspapers 
but during one of the routes um something strange happens and it goes completely dark like all the lights shut off it just like goes completely dark and they soon discover that it's somewhat like a pop apocalypse like the end of the world type of thing i don't know and they're just like racing to figure out what's going on why people are disappearing where everybody's at and i don't know y'all like i i'm gonna give the i have the second but the set volume two on my bookshelf and i'm gonna try and give it another go but honestly like <laughs> i don't even know what to say about this book i just i'm so lost it's so forgettable like i really don't know what's going on other than like i think it's like the end of the world type of things they've come across these monster looking people and yeah like i don't know so i gave it a two out of five stars it's not that good <laughs> at least in my opinion i don't know maybe i'll reread it before i read the second one i don't know but paper girls um the last book that i did read for the month of october was eliza and her monsters by francesca zappia so i did listen to this as well on audio and guys I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed this book. We follow um, Eliza and... What's his name? Wallace. <laughs> we follow Eliza and Wallace. Eliza is a... Um, she has a webcomic um, that is super popular. Like, She has so many followers and Wallace happens to be a super fan and she discovers that he is a super fan but he doesn't know um, who she is. When I was reading this, this definitely gave me radio silent vibes um, and what I did like about this book as well is that it does have illustrations in it so yeah. Um, let me see if I can find one. Like It has illustrations in it. You can see that. There it goes. It has like illustrations in it and I really love that about this book as well. Um, so yeah, Wallace and Eliza. Um, Eliza also discovers that Wallace has like a whole fan page. He's like the creator of this like top fan page that has like so many followers as well. So she knows that he's a super fan. This book totally gave me Radio Silence vibes because she's super anonymous. He doesn't know who she is, but she knows who he is. Um, and then... Like, it just gave me Radio Silence vibes, like, to the T. Um, but instead of it being um, a podcast, this is a webcomic. So, yeah, um, we do discover that Wallace has been through some trauma in his life. Hence, that's why he's super quiet and he's very standoffish. And he really has a sh hard time talking to people face to face, especially with Eliza at first. So when she discovers his deep, dark secret, she understands why he is the way he is. But she still can't find it she still can't figure out how to come to him and let him know that she's like the person he idolizes and soon he discovers who she is because her parents um he soon discovers who she is because her parents do something unthoughtful i guess you can say not i was gonna say dumb but not necessarily dumb they weren't they didn't mean to do what they did you know they were just trying to show her that they support her and they love what she does um but they kind of out her by posting on their school newspaper what she does so at this point everybody has discovered who she is because of her parents and wallace kind of like feels betrayed because he's told her so many secrets and she's had plenty of time to let him know who she is but she's never done it and he can't understand why so um i will say this book does deal with a lot of mental health eliza is someone who is a loner she likes to be alone she doesn't she's just she has she suffers from anxiety and some depression and she just feels like she's alone in the world that nobody understands her her parents don't understand her she just doesn't feel like she connects with people and the same with wallace after his little incident after not his little incident but after that tragedy thing that happened in his life his dad committed suicide so i will say going into this book know that it does deal with mental health um anxiety suicide depression um so yeah Although, like, I can totally relate because, you know, I myself do have my own mental illnesses. I do suffer from anxiety as well. Um, I will say just go going into it, I would, it's triggering. It really is. So it does talk about that. Um, I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars because overall it was a really good read. I really enjoyed it. In the end, Wallace forgives Eliza. He understands. Um, he just doesn't want to lose her the way he lost his dad because she's so 
depressed by what her parents have done to her that she feels like she can't be the person that she once was she can't she can't create like she once did and wallace has asked you know her to try but she just feels like she can't she can't discover who she is anymore because of that like she feels like she's been super exposed which i totally understand so yeah that is eliza and her monsters i hope i did all these books justice with my wrap-ups you guys i did my best um <laughs> I can only say it can only get better from here. Um, so yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you are not already. And yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.